us this week on Free Range Sailing as we battle the persistent 30 knot winds of the remote Abrolhos Islands to be rewarded with the most incredible wildlife experiences and abundant seafood. In the meantime, I'm going to make this crayfish salad before we go sailing tomorrow and it's really, really easy and we love it. Welcome to Free Range Sailing. For those of you that are new here, I'm Pascal and this is Troy. For the last four years and 180 episodes, we've circumnavigated Australia, culminating with a very demanding year refitting our 1969 Australian-built Clansman 30 sloop rigged yacht and sailing her across the Great Australian Bight. Now we've returned to our home state, we're taking the time to explore some of the places we didn't get the chance to see as much of before. Join us each week for more great sailing, fishing and adventure as we cruise the West Australian coast. The Abrolhos Islands are the most important breeding ground for seabirds in the East Indian Ocean and were found to support around 3.5 million seabirds in a survey completed in 1999. This is the northernmost limit in Western Australia where you can find a breeding population of Australian sea lions. The sea lions are incredibly playful and confident at the Abrolhos and they do not seem to perceive visiting humans as a threat. These lesser noddies are colonial birds normally nesting in short trees and scrub. Noddies are particularly tame while nesting, making them very easy to approach and catch if desired, which is why their scientific name means foolish or stupid in Greek. The Abrolhos is home to Western Australia's only breeding flocks of lesser noddies, which are more commonly found in the tropical waters along the eastern coastline and islands of Africa. While the young sea lion we encountered earlier on at the island swam right up to us, we did keep our distance while watching this very content looking sea lion and her pup feeding. It's hard to explain how incredibly draining the relentless wind at the islands was on our morale. Several days of consistent 30 knot winds made it difficult for us to set up the dinghy and get off our little boat. After days of being boat bound doing work and chores, we were motivated to get out again and have a look around at somewhere a little less windy.
friend sharing the anchorage with us had told us about this incredible blue hole, completely covered with colonial bubble tip anemone and accompanying Clark's anemone fish. We were amazed by the scale of this anemone colony, literally covering the entire four metre deep hole, which was roughly the size of a squash court. These anemone fish start as little males and as they grow older, they morph into females. The larger females were particularly aggressive darting out from the anemone and snapping their teeth at our mask and camera. Clark's anemone fish are the most widely distributed species of clownfish, being found in tropical waters of both the Indian and Pacific Ocean. Of all the anemone fish, they are also the least fussy of which anemone they will live in, and have been found to live in up to 10 different species. So there's a few things going on on Marool at the moment. Um, you can hear some sizzling in the background and that's because we went and got some crayfish. Here's a shot of them sitting in our cockpit. <laughs> so, we did pretty good. Um, the bag limit here is eight and that's what we went and got because we're about to go down south. We're going to sail with the winds tomorrow on our beam, hopefully and get a spinnaker run down to Perth to go and spend Chrissy with our family. Um, the Pasky's got a great idea for some provisioning. Um, what do you call it for our... A cold crayfish salad to have on the way down. Cold crayfish salad. We'll show you how it's done. So I thought tonight we'd make a seafood soup or something and make a nice stock out of the shells. Especially those, what we'll do is we'll fry them up, like what we did in Tassie, we'll fry them up in a bit of butter and then um, just to brown the shells a bit more, get more flavour and then add water and pressure cook it for maybe 10 minutes. Make a really nice like lobster stock. Ignore the hissing in the background, we've got the lobster stock in the pressure cooker. And we've just turned it off so it's hissing away, it's still cooking away under pressure. With no, but we're not burning any fuel which is really cool. But in the meantime I'm going to make this crayfish salad before we go sailing tomorrow. And it's really really easy and we love it. Um, basically it's mayonnaise, we're going to use radish sprouts as a little spicy hint. Um, we've boiled up four crayfish tails here and some of the legs are in here as well. Um, and yeah, and mayonnaise and lemon. So we don't have any um, store-bought mayonnaise and we're, we've decided, we started making our own now because we don't want to have vegetable oil um, in anything that we eat anymore. So we started making our own using MCT oil, which is, um, uh, it's the medium chain tigris guides from coconut oil. Don't ask me any more about it, but it's oil that's not 
um, most coconut oil is, is hard, but whereas this is runny, and you need a runny oil to make mayonnaise. We have used almond oil, and that works really well, and macadamia oil, and that works really well as well. And you can use olive oil, it's just that we're not really into the flavour of olive oil in mayonnaise. So, to make the mayonnaise, I'm just going to put a teaspoon of vinegar in here. One raw egg. Some salt. And you can put mustard in, but the mustard's cold and it's good to have everything at room temperature when you're making mayonnaise, so I might add the mustard in later. So I'm just going to use my stick blender to mix that up. And then we're just going to slowly add the oil. So it's starting to thicken quite quickly now and emulsify. I really like making mayo. Satisfying. The nice thing about this MCT oil is that it doesn't have a coconut flavour like the um, solid coconut oil that you probably know of. So it's really like neutral flavoured, it's really great for mayonnaise. Now that it has emulsified, I'm going to put a bit of mustard in so it shouldn't split now. And I'm going to put a little bit of lemon juice in as well. We can add more lemon juice to the salad. But I'll put some in the mayonnaise just to begin with. Put a touch more oil in. I'm just going to taste it. Mmm, it's pretty tasty. Yum. It's going to be a really nice base for our crayfish salad. You want to try some? It's so yummy mayonnaise with that oil. I like that there's no sweetener in it. Alright, so here's all our crayfish. I actually went through and pulled out from the larger legs, I pulled out the flesh of them. And then we've got the tails as well. So I'm just going to chop it up into little pieces and put it in a bowl and then we're going to mix the mayonnaise through. Pepper, your favourite, Troy. Um, and then we'll just we'll put some lemon juice on this crayfish now, and then we might put more on later. Ooh, there's cuts on my hands from catching the crayfish. <laughs> it's stinging. So these are really peppery. Well, they basically taste like radish, but perhaps not as intense, but they're still pretty peppery. So I'm just going to add like a few. Yeah, that's enough. Little handfuls like that. Okay, so now we've got all the elements in here, just have to add the mayonnaise. So how much was that? Two tablespoons. We'll see how it goes, we might have to add more. So we made the radish sprouts ourselves. They're just radish seeds um, that are, yeah, sprouted. sprouted. <laughs> These ones were sold as ones that you plant, but no problems with them. No fungicide on there? No fungicide on them, no. No, no, they were from an organic seed um, supplier in Queensland called Eden Seeds, and they don't use any fungicide or anything like that on their seeds, so you can sprout them. And they do sell a lot of things as microgreens and sprouts as well. Mmm. It's really nice. Needs nothing more? Mmm. Maybe a little bit more lemon. This is our very last lemon. Time to sail on out of here. Mm. To the place where they've got lemons. That's a wrap. I'm just going to go into this container. I like these. These have a lid, but they're a little bit awkward to store as they're circular. Whereas square containers are a bit easier to store in the fridge. So I'll just transfer it. We got this from Kath. And they've been really useful, so thanks Kath. Collapsible Tupperware bowl. Hopefully I don't spit. Tell it. Oh. I jinxed myself. I think I'll wash it first. <laughs> but it collapses flat. You get the idea.
To serve the crayfish salad while underway, we placed each serving in a clamshell that we'd found on the beach. We chilled the shells in the fridge overnight, so the salad stayed extra cool and it was every bit as delicious as it looks. Make sure you tune in next week as we sail to Rottnest Island and show you some of the both well-known and lesser-known attractions. Until then, thanks for watching and hitting the like button as it really helps to recommend our video to like-minded viewers.